It started like any other day in the city. A symphony of car horns, sirens wailing in the distance, the rumble of the subway beneath my feet. I was rushing to meet Mia, my girlfriend, for lunch. She's a nurse at the city hospital, always working crazy shifts. Me, I'm Alex, a journalist, always chasing the next story, the truth hiding behind the headlines. We were supposed to grab a quick bite at that little Italian place we both love, the one with the checkered tablecloths and the grumpy old owner who somehow always remembers our order. But as I hurried down the crowded street, my phone buzzed with an emergency alert. Quarantine. The whole city. Effective immediately. People around me stopped, staring at their phones, a wave of confusion and murmurs rippling through the crowd. What the hell was going on? They were saying it was a new virus, highly contagious, spreading fast. They were urging everyone to stay calm, to follow the official instructions, to stay indoors. But something felt wrong. My gut churned, a familiar feeling that something wasn't adding up. The city had seen its share of outbreaks before, but nothing that warranted a full-blown quarantine. This felt different, overkill. I shoved through the crowd, my heart pounding, a sense of urgency gripping me. I had to get to Mia. I had to get off the streets. The city, once teeming with life, was rapidly transforming into a ghost town. Stores were closing their shutters, buses and taxis disappearing, people rushing towards their homes, their faces masks of fear and uncertainty. When I finally reached the hospital, it was already on lockdown. Heavily armed figures in black uniforms and featureless masks stood guard at the entrance their eyes cold and watchful. They were turning people away, their voices amplified by bullhorns, their words a chilling echo of authority and control. No entry. The hospital is under quarantine. Return to your homes and await further instructions. Panic welled up inside me. Mia was in there, trapped. I had to get to her. I flashed my press credentials, my voice tight with desperation. My girlfriend's a nurse here. I need to see her. The guard, his face hidden behind a mirrored visor, shook his head. No exceptions. Stand back or you'll be detained. I backed away, my heart sinking. The weight of the situation, the unknown threat lurking behind the quarantine, pressed down on me, suffocating. The city was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. And I had a feeling it wasn't going to be good. I had to find another way into the hospital. I had to find out what was really going on. I had to find Mia. I pulled out my phone, the screen displaying the city's map, my mind already racing, plotting a course through the locked down streets. My job as a journalist was to uncover the truth, to expose the lies, to give a voice to the voiceless. And this, this felt like the biggest story of my life, a story that could change everything. As the city descended into an eerie silence, broken only by the distant sirens and the amplified voices of the enforcers, I knew that the quarantine wasn't about protecting us. It was about hiding something, and I was going to find out what. The city was a tomb. Empty streets, shuttered businesses, the only movement the eerie black SUVs of the enforcers patrolling the deserted avenues. I made it back to my apartment, my mind racing, my pulse hammering in my ears. Mia hadn't answered my calls. The hospital was locked down tight. The official news channels were spewing the same tired lines. Stay calm, stay indoors, await further instructions. But every instinct in my body screamed that something was deeply, terribly wrong. The quarantine felt less like a safety measure and more like a cage. My apartment, usually a sanctuary, felt suffocating. Every creak of the building, every shadow cast by the flickering streetlights outside, sent a shiver down my spine. The city's usual hum, the comforting rhythm of life, had been replaced by an unsettling silence. A silence that screamed secrets. Mia finally called back, her voice strained, tight with exhaustion. Alex, thank God I was worried sick. Are you okay? Relief washed over me, a wave so strong it almost brought me to my knees. I'm fine, Mia. I'm home. What about you? What's going on at the hospital? It's chaotic. We're swamped with patients, but it's not just the virus. There are cases. 
people coming in with strange symptoms, things we've never seen before, aggressive behavior, hallucinations, even physical mutations. Her voice dropped to a whisper. They're saying it's a new strain, highly aggressive, but it's like something out of a horror movie, Alex. I've never seen anything like it. My gut churned, confirming my suspicions. This wasn't just some run-of-the-mill outbreak. Something else was at play. Something dark. Something hidden. Mia, I need you to do something for me, I said, my voice firming with each word. I need information. Check the hospital database, the restricted files. Look for anything unusual, anything that might explain what's really happening. She hesitated, her voice laced with worry. Alex, you know I can't access those files. It's a security breach. I know, Mia, but something's not right. We need to know the truth. She sighed, a weary sound that spoke of her exhaustion, of the fear that was starting to grip the city. All right, she said, her voice barely a whisper. I'll see what I can find. But be careful, Alex. Things are getting bad out there. We hung up, and I paced my apartment, the silence pressing in on me, amplifying every creak and groan of the old building. I had to do something to find out what was happening, to expose the truth. But how? I was a journalist, not a detective, not a scientist. All I had was my gut instinct, my relentless pursuit of the truth, and a growing sense of dread that the city was on the verge of something catastrophic. Hours passed, the city outside my window a tableau of eerie stillness. The whispers Mia had mentioned at the hospital, I started to hear them too. Faint at first, then growing louder, swirling around me, slithering through the cracks in my apartment walls. A cold, insidious presence that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Just as my fear was threatening to overwhelm me, my phone buzzed with a message from Mia. She had found something, encrypted files, hidden deep within the hospital database, files that suggested the quarantine wasn't about a virus, it was about an experiment, an experiment gone wrong. Mia's message was short, cryptic, but it confirmed my worst fears. Project Chimera, it read, classified government experiment, genetic manipulation, subjects, unstable. The words hung in the air a chilling echo of the whispers that seemed to be closing in on me. I had to find out more. Project Chimera. What the hell was it? What had they unleashed on the city? Days turned into a blur. The city held its breath, locked in a state of uneasy stillness. The official news channels repeated the same tired lines about a viral outbreak, urging citizens to stay calm and comply with the quarantine. But online, Whispers of something more sinister were spreading. Rumors of strange creatures, violent outbreaks, government cover-ups. I spent every waking hour glued to my computer, scouring the web, chasing down leads, trying to piece together the truth. My editor, a grizzled veteran of investigative journalism, warned me to be careful. This thing stinks, Alex, he said, his voice gruff. Don't get in over your head. But I couldn't stop. I had to know. I had to find Mia. I tracked down an old contact, a hacker who owed me a favor. He was reluctant, but my desperation, the raw fear in my voice, convinced him to help. He dug into the city's network, bypassing firewalls, cracking encrypted files. What he found was chilling. Project Chimera was a top-secret government experiment, a desperate attempt to create super-soldiers, individuals with enhanced abilities, immune to disease, resistant to pain. But the experiment had backfired horribly. The virus, designed to rewrite human DNA, had mutated, creating something monstrous, something uncontrollable. These subjects, the hacker said, his voice tight with apprehension. They're not human anymore, Alex. They're something else, strong, fast, aggressive, and they're spreading. I stared at the files on my screen, the horrifying truth sinking in. The quarantine wasn't about containing a virus, it was about containing monsters. The enforcers weren't there to protect us, they were there to silence the truth. 
I had to get to Mia. I had to warn her. But the hospital was still under lockdown, guarded by the enforcers. My only option was to find another way in, to bypass the checkpoints, to disappear into the labyrinthine corridors of the city. The city outside my window was a ghost town, bathed in the cold, pale light of the moon. The streets were deserted, the only sound the distant rumble of the enforcers' SUVs. I packed a bag with essentials. My laptop, camera, a few changes of clothes, some basic medical supplies. I had to be prepared for anything. As I slipped out of my apartment, a shadow detached itself from a nearby alleyway, its movement fluid and silent. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. An enforcer. He stood there, his face hidden behind a mirrored visor, his body clad in black tactical gear, a rifle slung across his shoulder. He didn't speak, just stared at me, his presence a chilling reminder of the control that had gripped the city. I slowly backed away, my gaze fixed on him, my hand reaching for the pepper spray in my pocket. He didn't move, his silence more menacing than any threat. Then, as quickly as he had appeared, he melted back into the shadows, leaving me trembling in the cold, empty street. I had to be careful. The enforcers were everywhere, their eyes watching, their ears listening. I was playing a dangerous game, a game where the stakes were life or death. But I had to keep moving. I had to find Mia. I had to expose the truth. I slipped into the shadows, my heart pounding, the city's silence a deafening roar in my ears. The quarantine had unleashed something monstrous, something far beyond our control. And the truth, once unleashed, would change everything. The city was a maze of shadows and fear. I navigated the deserted streets, sticking to the back alleys, my heart pounding with every rustle of wind, every flicker of movement in the darkness. The city, once so familiar, now felt alien, hostile. My phone was dead, my only link to Mia the encrypted messaging app we used. I had to get to the hospital, had to find out if she was safe, had to warn her about Project Chimera. The enforcers were everywhere, their black SUVs like predatory beasts circling their prey. Their checkpoints were impossible to bypass, the guards armed to the teeth, their faces masked, their voices cold and emotionless. I was forced to take detours, to navigate the rooftops, to disappear into the underground tunnels, my sense of direction fraying with each passing hour. The further I ventured into the heart of the city, the more I realized the true scale of the nightmare. There were rumors, whispered tales of the infected, of people changing, becoming something monstrous. I dismissed it as fear-mongering, the product of a city on edge. But now, as I saw firsthand the desperate measures, the brutal efficiency of the enforcers, I knew the rumors were true. I saw an enforcer squad dragging a struggling figure into their SUV, the man's screams muffled by a thick cloth gag, his eyes wide with terror. He was young, barely more than a kid, his clothes torn, his skin covered in a network of dark pulsing veins. They slammed the SUV door shut, the sound echoing in the desolate street, and sped away, leaving behind a lingering sense of dread. I knew then that the quarantine wasn't about containing a virus. It was about containing a nightmare. A nightmare that was spreading, mutating, consuming everything in its path. I finally reached the hospital its towering structure a beacon of hope in the oppressive darkness. But the hope was quickly extinguished. The hospital was a fortress, surrounded by a double layer of razor wire, guarded by enforcers armed with automatic weapons. There was no way in, not without risking my life. But then, as I crouched in the shadows across the street, observing the checkpoint, a flicker of movement caught my eye. A figure was slipping out of a side door, a small, slender figure in a nurse's uniform. Mia. Relief flooded through me, a wave so strong it almost brought me to my knees. She was okay. She had made it out. I hurried towards her, my heart pounding with a mix of joy and trepidation. She saw me, her face etched with relief and exhaustion, her eyes wide with a mixture of fear and determination. We embraced, the feel of her arms around me, the warmth of her body, 
anchoring me to a reality that felt like it was slipping away. Alex, you're insane. What are you doing here? It's not safe. I had to find you, Mia. I had to know you were okay. She looked around, her gaze darting nervously at the shadows, her voice barely a whisper. We have to get out of here. Now. They're... They're watching us. She pulled me towards a narrow alleyway, her hand gripping mine tightly. We ran, our footsteps echoing in the deserted streets, the whispers of the city swirling around us, a chilling reminder of the darkness we were trying to escape. We had to get out of the city, had to find a place to hide, to regroup, to figure out what to do next. But as we ran, I knew that the nightmare wasn't contained within the quarantine zone. It was spreading, growing stronger, feeding on our fear. And the truth, once unleashed, would change everything. We burst into Mia's tiny studio apartment, our lungs burning, our clothes soaked with sweat. The adrenaline that had fueled our escape was fading, leaving a trembling exhaustion in its wake. Mia locked the door, the flimsy bolt a pathetic defense against the nightmare unfolding outside. They're covering it up, Alex, she said, her voice trembling, her eyes wide with a mixture of fear and anger. Project Chimera, they were trying to create super soldiers, but it went wrong. Horribly wrong. She pulled out a flash drive, her hand shaking as she plugged it into her laptop. The screen flickered to life, displaying a series of horrifying images, medical reports, lab notes, photos of patients twisted and deformed, their bodies ravaged by the Chimera virus. They were testing it on people, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. Homeless people, prisoners, anyone they could snatch off the streets without anyone noticing. I stared at the screen, the images searing themselves into my mind. The virus was a nightmare, rewriting human DNA, twisting bodies and minds, turning people into monsters. Why? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Why would they do this? Mia's gaze met mine, her eyes filled with a chilling certainty. Power, Alex. Control. They wanted to create an army of super soldiers, but they created a plague, and now they're trying to cover it up, to silence anyone who knows the truth. The whispers outside the apartment seemed to intensify, their voices slithering through the cracks in the walls, their presence a constant, menacing reminder of the darkness closing in. We were trapped, hunted, with the truth burning a hole in our pockets. We have to expose this, Mia, I said, my voice firming with each word. The world needs to know. She nodded, her gaze fixed on the laptop screen, her fingers flying across the keyboard as she downloaded the files, copied them, backed them up, a digital lifeline against the encroaching darkness. I know someone, she said, her voice barely a whisper. A journalist works for an independent news agency. He's been investigating the quarantine, digging for the truth. She met my gaze, her eyes filled with a desperate hope. We have to get to him, Alex. He can help us expose this. He can get the word out. But how? The city was locked down, the enforcers everywhere, their eyes watching, their ears listening. We were trapped in a cage of our own making, the truth a dangerous weapon in a world gone mad. Suddenly a pounding on the door shattered the silence. We froze, our hearts hammering in our chests, our breath catching in our throats. The enforcers, they had found us. Open up, emergency response team, a voice barked from behind the door. The doorknob rattled, the flimsy bolt straining against the force of their entry. We had to escape, now. Mia grabbed my hand, her eyes wide with panic. This way, she whispered, pulling me towards a small window at the back of the apartment. It leads to the fire escape. We scrambled through the window, the cold night air stinging our faces, the city lights a dizzying blur below us. We climbed down the fire escape, our hearts pounding, our lungs burning, the whispers of the city chasing us, their voices filled with a chilling promise of oblivion. We had to get to the journalist, to expose the truth, to warn the world. But Dr. Pierce and his enforcers were closing in, determined to silence us, to bury the truth beneath a mountain of lies and fear. The city was a battleground, and we were caught in the crossfire, fighting for our lives. 
fighting for the truth. The alley was a labyrinth of shadows and trash, the stench of decay thick in the air. We scrambled over overflowing dumpsters, ducking under fire escapes, our footsteps echoing in the oppressive silence. Behind us, we could hear the heavy thud of boots on pavement, the harsh voices of the enforcers, their presence a chilling reminder of the danger closing in. This way, Mia whispered, her voice a ragged gasp. She pulled me towards a fire escape ladder, her hand cold and clammy in mine. We climbed, our muscles screaming, our lungs burning, the adrenaline pushing us forward. We reached the rooftop, the city spread out before us like a vast, dark ocean. The whispers were louder up here, swirling around us, their voices a chorus of fear and madness, their presence a palpable chill in the night air. We had to get to Ren, the journalist Mia knew. He was our only hope, our only chance to expose the truth about Project Chimera. But how? The city was a maze and we were being hunted. Mia pulled out her phone, its screen cracked but still functional. Ren's place is just a few blocks from here, she said, her voice tight with urgency. But we can't risk the streets. We need to stay above ground. We navigated the rooftops, a perilous dance across crumbling brick and treacherous fire escapes. The whispers followed us, their voices growing louder, their presence more menacing. We could feel the entity's power growing, feeding on the fear and chaos spreading through the city. We saw them, the infected, lurking in the shadows, their bodies twisted and deformed, their eyes burning with an unholy light. They were no longer human, just monstrous shells driven by a primal hunger, a lust for destruction. We had to keep moving. Time was running out. The city was on the brink of collapse, and the truth, the horrifying truth about Project Chimera, was the only weapon we had left. We finally reached Ren's building, a crumbling apartment block in a forgotten corner of the city. We climbed down the fire escape, our bodies aching, our minds reeling from the constant fear and adrenaline. Mia pounded on Ren's door, her fists thudding against the wood. Ren, it's Mia, open up! The door creaked open, a chain lock still in place. A weary face appeared in the narrow opening, his eyes bloodshot, his hair a mess. Mia, what the hell are you doing here? It's not safe. We have to talk, Ren. It's about the quarantine. It's... it's not what they're saying. He hesitated, his gaze darting nervously at the shadows. What are you talking about? Project Chimera, Mia said, her voice barely a whisper. It's an experiment, a virus. They're turning people into... monsters. Ren's eyes widened, his expression a mixture of disbelief and horror. He unlocked the chain, pulling us inside, the door closing behind us with a reassuring thud. We were safe, for now. We told him everything, the encrypted files from the hospital, the horrifying truth about Project Chimera, our encounter with the infected, the enforcer's relentless pursuit. He listened intently, his journalistic instincts kicking in, his mind already racing, piecing together the story, seeing the bigger picture. This is huge, Mia, he said, his voice a low murmur. This could, this could bring the whole system down. He turned to me, his eyes filled with a grim determination. We have to get this out there, Alex. The world needs to know. But how? The official channels were controlled. The mainstream media silenced. The internet swarming with government propaganda and disinformation. We were just three people, facing a vast and powerful conspiracy. A nightmare that was spreading, consuming everything in its path. I have a plan, Ren said his voice firming with each word. It's risky, but it's our only chance. We'll use the dark web, anonymous servers, encrypted channels. We'll bypass their firewalls, get the truth out there, bit by bit, until it's too big to ignore, too dangerous to contain. We had a weapon against the darkness, the truth, but we were fighting a desperate battle, a battle against time, against a powerful enemy who was determined to silence us, to bury the truth beneath a mountain of lies and fear. The city was holding its breath, waiting for the storm to break, and we were about to unleash it. Ren's apartment became our war room. The air crackled with a nervous energy as he worked feverishly at his computer, 
his fingers flying across the keyboard, lines of code scrolling down the screen. Mia, her face pale but her resolve unwavering, helped him craft the message, the horrifying truth of Project Chimera taking shape in the digital ether. We knew the risks. Dr. Pierce wouldn't hesitate to silence us permanently. The enforcers were his attack dogs, loyal and ruthless. But we had no choice. The city, the world, needed to know the truth. We uploaded the files to anonymous servers, mirrored them, scattered them across the dark web like seeds of rebellion. We contacted other independent journalists, whistleblowers, anyone who would listen. The whispers of the city, once a source of fear, were now becoming a chorus of dissent, of anger, of a dawning realization that the quarantine was a lie, a monstrous deception. The city, once shrouded in an eerie silence, began to stir. Protests erupted, fueled by fear and anger. People took to the streets, their voices rising above the amplified pronouncements of the enforcers, demanding answers, demanding the truth. The official narrative crumbled. The carefully constructed facade of control shattered. The whispers of Project Chimera became a roar, echoing through the city, spreading across the globe via social media, independent news outlets, and underground networks. The world was waking up to the nightmare. Dr. Pierce and his team vanished, their whereabouts unknown, their faces plastered across wanted posters, their names synonymous with betrayal and horror. The enforcers, their authority undermined, became more brutal, more desperate, their actions a last violent gasp of a dying regime. The city descended into chaos. The infected, no longer confined to the quarantine zones, roamed the streets, their twisted forms a horrifying spectacle, their presence a reminder of the government's monstrous creation. Fear turned to panic, and panic turned to rage. The city was burning, consumed by the flames of a truth that could no longer be contained. Mia and I, our faces now familiar from Ren's expose, became targets. We fled from safe house to safe house, aided by a network of allies who believed in the truth, who were willing to fight for justice. We saw the aftermath of Dr. Pierce's ambition firsthand, the ravaged bodies of the infected, the terrified faces of those still human, the crumbling infrastructure of a city on the verge of collapse. The quarantine, designed to hide the truth, had only delayed the inevitable. The nightmare had been unleashed, and there was no turning back. In the end, the government was forced to acknowledge Project Chimera, to admit their involvement in the experiment gone wrong, but their apologies felt hollow, their promises of containment empty. The damage was done. The city, the world, would never be the same. Mia and I, scarred by the experience, left the city. We found a small town, a quiet place far from the chaos, a place to heal, to rebuild our lives. But the whispers of the city, the memory of the infected, the chilling truth of Project Chimera, would forever haunt our dreams. The quarantine wasn't about protecting us. It was about protecting them, protecting the powerful, the corrupt, the ones who thought they could play God and control the forces of darkness. But the darkness always finds a way out, and the truth, once unleashed, can never be contained.